In this part of the lecture, we're going to talk a little bit more about the biology of the plants in mangrove habitats. In order for the trees to live in salt water, in tidal water, they need a whole range of adaptations in order to do that. So they have very special features for living in salt water and also living in areas where they are inundated, like this tree that's sitting on a reef flat in this first image. Now salt is toxic for all plants, even for mangroves. So they have to do a lot of work, metabolic work, in order to exclude the salt at the root surface and only extract fresh water, or mostly fresh water, from the water that inundates them with each tide. Now, in addition to excluding the salt at the root surface, they also have some other tricks. They limit their water loss when they do photosynthetic carbon gain. So plants take up carbon dioxide from the atmosphere through very small pores called stomata on the leaf surface. Now mangroves limit the amount of water they, lo they lose through those pores and that gives rise to very low stomatal conductance. In addition to that, some species have salt glands. So they actually excrete the salt from their leaf surface. And you can see that here in this second image where there are salt crystals on the leaves. Now crystals can also occur because of salt spray or the accumulation of salt spray on leaves. So the next time, if you get the opportunity to walk through a mangrove, rub your fingers over the leaves and see if you can taste the salt on their surface. One of the important features of mangrove trees is their root systems. Trees that are inundated by salt water or by tidal water, even if it is relatively fresh every day, need to uh, move oxygen from the air down into their root systems so that they can continue their metabolic activity of taking up water and nutrients and growth. So in mangroves, they have very special roots for transporting oxygen. These roots inside are spongy, filled with tissue or uh, cells called erenchyma. And this is, uh, this is tissue that has a lot of air spaces to allow the transport of oxygen from the air down into the soils that are low in oxygen. These roots, which can be buttress roots, and you can see the top picture here, uh, pneumatophores, so almost like snorkels, sticking up out of the water, stilt roots or prop roots, which are these extremely impressive structures uh, in some mangrove forests, and also even knee roots, which are uh, like nubbins uh, appearing above the soil surface. Now these roots are also important because they give rise to some of the whole ecosystem properties of mangrove forests. In addition to allowing the mangroves to transport oxygen from the air down into these anaerobic muds, the roots are habitats for other organisms. There's a beautiful algal community that persists on these roots. They have the function of increasing friction and slowing the velocity of tidal water which allows particles that are suspended in the tidal water to sink to the forest floor. And this is one of the processes that allows these forests to accumulate a whole range of material and also to increase their soil volume through time, which is important for their, for their ability to maintain their position with sea level rise. And we're going to talk about that in the next part of this lecture. Not only are there features of their leaves and roots that are important, but they also have very specialised uh, dispersal and reproductive uh, um, strategies. Many of the tree species have propagules rather than true seeds. And this means a propagule is a ready-to-go seedling that has already germinated on the parent plant and once it's dropped into the water it's essentially a whole seedling ready to go. This 
strategy is called vivapory. Now these sorts of propagules and also the true seeds that are produced by some mangrove species are buoyant and they're dispersed by tides and by currents. Now I've spent most of my time talking about the special adaptations of the trees, but there are also a whole range of specialised fauna that live in mangrove forests. Crabs in this first picture are extremely important. They consume leaf litter that drops to the forest floor. They have vast quantities of larvae that are food for other organisms and that are released into tidal waters. And the crab burrows contribute to the roughness, that friction offered by the habitat to the water. There's also a hugely diverse community of invertebrates and vertebrates. And some of these are commercially important fish species. This second picture you'll see is of a mudskipper and these are one of the most charismatic uh, fishes of mangrove habitats. In addition to the organisms that you associate either swimming or with the, with the benthos, with the actual forest floor, there's a whole range of other fauna that basically visit mangrove, uh, mangrove forests temporarily or use parts of the canopy. And for example here I've got birds and bats, fruit bats. Now fruit bats love to roost in mangroves as do many bird species. Crocodiles, tigers, uh, all manner of other organisms are also uh, temporary visitors and extract resources from mangrove forests. Finally, I want to talk to you about some of the landscape patterns that you can observe when you're looking at mangroves at that scale. So here's an image from a river in northern Australia where the mangrove species are coloured differently on the landscape. And you can see that there are patterns in the distribution of the vegetation. So the red at the front are the rhizophora communities with the big hoop roots. The yellow behind is the avicennia. And the bluish aquary colour, more landward again, is the scrub mangrove with cyanobacterial mats associated with it. Now these patterns that are arising in the landscape are due to the differences in species tolerances of salinity, of inundation, nutrient availability, and also differences in the propagule dispersal and predation. So all of these factors together combine to, to give rise to the patterns in the mangrove forests that we see. Now if you want to look at this more, then I refer you to the next le lecture where you'll see some video that goes across these different zones of the mangrove habitats.